When we arrived by helicopter over the assembly point, the sight that greeted us was impressive. Thousands of people were still in silence. Dublin lay like a model village below us, and these people who had come to protest their cause seemed, when viewed from afar, insignificant and ineffectual. But when we started counting heads and votes, that protest acquired a new perspective. And we had made a mistake. From 700 feet, we thought we were filming the beginning of a large march. In fact, this throng was the end of a procession that wound through the heart of the capital. At every landmark above which we paused, it seemed that thousands were joining the march from converging streets, tributaries joining the mainstream. Our pilot followed that flood to a Connell Street bridge. Hovering over the bridge, we could see a mass of people gently moving towards Leinster House through streets normally crammed with cars. But this afternoon, traffic was well away from the city centre. In O'Connell Street, thousands had already completed the circuit past government buildings, while thousands more walked past them, their march just beginning. I was told that only twice before in living memory has such a host been united in the very core of the capital. Once in 1913, when Jim Larkin led the proceedings, and again in 1932, when the crowds turned out for the Eucharistic Congress. Today's turnout was awesome, and on the ground watching it, John Carberry. Led by the brass band of the ITDWU, the massive march began from O'Connell Bridge. It was, said the organisers, a much bigger turnout than even they had anticipated. The parade went to government buildings where a letter of protest was handed into the tea shop, Mr. Lynch, and the Minister for Finance, Mr. Colley, by the President of the Dublin Council of Trades Unions, May Clifford, and the General Secretary of the NWTU, Larry O'Neill. And as the head of the column arrived at the GPO, some marchers had not yet set off from Parnell Square. In O'Connell Street, speakers called for a tax system which would not penalise anyone, but would see to it that the PAYE sector would not be bearing an unfair share. References to Mr. Colley and Economics Minister Professor Martin O'Donoghue, who said in Brussels yesterday that the protest could not produce any sudden concessions, were met with boos and jeers. In effect, the marchers have given the government until May Day to come up with some acceptable tax offer. One speaker said the demonstration was not the finish, it was only the beginning. Marching season again as 700,000 PAYE workers take to the streets in protest at a tax system which they believe bleeds the workers and ignores the wealthy. In 30 cities and towns from Skibbereen to Letterkenny, the marchers have been spelling out their demands for reform. Here in Dublin, approximately 350,000 men and women, young and old, march from Parnell Square in biting cold to the sound of the transport band. They made an impressive and colourful sight. But underlying all their good humour is a serious message to the government. We want a better deal for the workers, for the ordinary people who are paying tax through the nose. We want a more equitable taxation system. So who do you want to see tax more? We want to see everyone taxed. Everyone a fair taxed tax. Today. We don't mind paying tax, but we want to see everyone with a fair tax. <coughs> the farmers, I suppose. Farmers. And the farmers have had a bad year this year. Do you think it's fair to the farmers? What about the good years they have? I'm taxed on my old age pension and everything. We're taxed far too heavily, far too heavy. Do you think they're going to, are you looking forward to the case next Friday, the married person? I am, yes, certainly. Yeah. Wish them all yeah. the best to look. I hope they win. The farmers, about the time they start paying their, their way as well as us. If we have to pay, why shouldn't they? But you see, the farm, if the farmers pay, pay their share, because they the farmers don't. Ah, they're getting after it, they're getting after it. I'm self-employed. I'm the men that do the next house. The campaign is now almost a year old. It was born out of anger and resentment when the government, faced with the militant farming lobby, backtracked on their first real efforts to bring farmers into the tax net. 
but the farmers' opposition backfired badly, for while the debate raged, the public's attention was focused on both the low level of farmer taxation and the fact that the PAYE sector was underwriting four-fifths of the entire income tax burden. The workers' anger mounted, and mobilised by their unions, they took to the streets in a startling backlash. Today, those scenes were repeated with a vengeance, but this protest, unlike its predecessors, had the blessing of the Irish Congress of Trade Unions. Yesterday, their representatives met the Taoiseach and demanded action in the February budget, and there's no doubt that they have the clout to back those demands. Today, the commercial and business life of the country ground to a halt as the workers downed tools in a historic display of strength. From off-duty guardie to tax inspectors, the PAYE workers of Ireland showed they mean business.